insoluble problem, major crisis. Both stepmothers want their names on the wedding invitation. So I suggested and none of the parents' names should be on it. But after all, we're not adolescents. We can announce our wedding and invite people ourselves. So Catherine screamed her head off, arguing that would be a slap in the face to her parents who are paying through the nose for the reception, and particularly for her stepmother who's gone to so much trouble when she isn't even her daughter. And I finally let myself be persuaded, totally against my better judgment. So, I telephoned my mother. Mother, I said, I've done everything I can to avoid this, but we have absolutely no choice. Yvonne's name has to be on the invitation. And she said, if Yvonne's name is on the invitation, take mine off. Mother, I said, I back, beg you, please don't make things even more difficult. And she said, how dare you suggest my name is left to float around on the invitation as if I was some abandoned woman below Yvonne who'll be clapped to your father's surname like her limpet. And I said to her, Mother, I have friends waiting for me. Yes, that's right, there's always something better to do. Anything more important than I am, goodbye. And she hung up. Catherine, who was sitting next to me, but hadn't heard her side of the conversation, said, what's she saying? I said, she doesn't want her name on the invitation with Yvonne, which is understandable. I'm not talking about that. What was it she said about the wedding? Nothing. You're lying. I'm not Catherine, I promise you. She just doesn't want her name on the invitation with Yvonne. Well, call her back and tell her when your son's getting married, you rise above your vanity. <laughs> she say the same to your stepmother. That's got nothing to do with it, Catherine shouted. It's me. I'm the one who's insisting her name's on it. It's not her poor thing. She's tack personified. If she had any idea of the problem this is causing, she'd be down on her knees, begging for her name to be taken off. Now call her back. So I called her again. By now, I'm in shreds. Catherine's listening in the extension. Iran, my mother says, up to now, you have conducted your affairs in the most chaotic way imaginable. And just because, out of the blue, you decide to embark on matrimony, I find myself obliged to spend all afternoon and evening with your father, a man who I haven't seen for 17 years, and to whom I was not expecting to have to reveal my hip size and puppy cheeks, not to mention Yvonne, who, incidentally, according to Felix Perillari, has now taken up bridge. My mother also plays bridge. I can see none of this can be helped, but on the invitation, the one item everyone is going to receive and examine, I insist on making a solo performance. Catherine, who's sitting next to me, shakes her head and screws up her face in disgust. Mother, I say, why are you so selfish? I'm not selfish! I'm not selfish! She had the gall to say everyone in the family had a heart of stone, but she knows perfectly well about poor Andre's pacemaker. Yes, that's right, very funny, everything's a joke to you, Ivan. It's not me who's the special one. Off you go, my boy. Go on, go and see your precious friends! Then nothing, nothing's been resolved. I hung up, mini drama with Catherine, cut short, because I was late. <laughs>